the life. And that is the instruction of God, the command of God, the counsel of God for everyone here tonight. And as you see it in the scripture, where God himself is asking you to delight yourself in him, he will accomplish what he has promised for every one of you tonight and all the days of this program in Jesus' name. Before we pray and before we preach, we will see a part of scripture in Psalm 37. Please open your Bible and let's read together. Psalm 37. We are reading verse 4. And we are going to read it together after the count of two. Are we there? I'm waiting for you. Psalm 37, reading verse 4. Are we there now? One, two, go. How many of you believe that scripture? Now you will rise up on your feet now. He says, delight thyself also in the law. You have partially fulfilled that by coming here. Your coming here shows that you have delight in the law. But then he doesn't stop here. He says, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Actually, before he gives you that desire, you've got to express it first unto him in prayer. And tonight, I give you just a few minutes to open your mouth and express your desire to God as you approach your exams or all the papers you have written, the ones that are here to be written, whatever you expect from Him, whatever help you expect from God, I want you to express it in prayer as you call upon Him in a few minutes. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I bring the desires of your people before you now. And I'm asking that whatever they have requested in prayer, whatever they have poised out unto you, or whatever, O oh Lord, they have expressed unto you, one way or the other, Lord, I pray, put your heavenly stamp of approval upon them now. Perform their desires in Jesus' name. Here tonight, answer every prayer. Meet every need. Solve every problem. Fulfill every desire. Satisfy every expectation. And fill the cup of your people full with your blessings in Jesus' name. Thank you for the answer. Jesus' name I pray. And amen. We shall be seated. Tonight, I'll be speaking to you on the message, Riding on the Storms of Academic Examination. Riding on the Storms of Academic Examination. I take my text from Mark Gospel, chapter 4. I'll be reading from the 35 through 40. Mark, Gospel, chapter 4, reading from verse 35 through 40. And the same day, when the evil was calm, and the evil had come now, he said unto them, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us pass over unto the other side, and you are passing over. To the other semester. And those of you and final year students, you are passing over. 
to the national service here. You are passing over to graduation. You are in part one, you are passing over to year two. From year two, you are passing over to year three. From three, you are passing over to year four. I know this is not the rain semester exam, but you know, there are some courses that we offer that are, uh, that are uh, not personal, uh, that is prerequisite. Thank you very much. That are prerequisite. And if you fail those exams, there's no way you can pass over. I so, uh, and as a final year student, if you fail any course in Amatan semester, whether prerequisite or elective, if you fail any course in Amatan semester, definitely there's no graduation. But you are passing over. You are graduating. Let us pass over onto the other side. And when they have sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the sheep. And there were also with him other little sheep. And there were arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat upon the sheep, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the sheep, asleep on the pillow. And they awaked him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And any wind of failure threatening you in this exam, any storm of academic malperformance, any storm of failure troubling you or threatening you tonight, I say to them by the authority of the word of God, peace be still in Jesus' name. And they will cease. And they will cease. And there was a great calm. And you are going to experience great success. Yeah. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How he sees that he have no faith. You will have faith. Yeah. And your faith is in you too. Yeah. Here in this passage of scripture, Christ's disciples were on board of a sea, traveling to the other side of the lake. And at all. Apply that unto you. You are in this examination wanting to cross over to the other side of your academic progress. For Jesus and his disciples, it wasn't just a jolly fun ride. They had a defined purpose. Of course, without a purpose, you wouldn't be here. That's a purpose. You have come to achieve academic laurel. You have come to achieve academic uh, prowess. That's why you are here. And this exam is what is proving how far you have gone in your learning. So, the disciples had a purpose. And we have a purpose of being here. They were on a mission. So we are on a mission. And the Lord was on the tree. What a wonderful thing. For the disciples. And how beautiful and glorious it will be for you too that in your academic pursuits, in your examination that you are writing, that Christ will be in your trip. You know, there is a saying that life without Christ is a crisis full life. Yes, he didn't know Christ was with the disciples. While on the high sea, a great tempest arose. The storm turned the sea into an angry billow, splashing against and into the sea, threatening to sink it. In fear, in distress, and in desperation, the apostles yelled and charged the Lord, Careless thou not that we perish? For why the sea raged? Why the wind howled, and why the billows rolled, the Lord laid nestled on a pillow, having a good sleep. He arose, and then he calmed the storm with a three-word command, Peace 
be seen. This incident, narrated by the theory in Optic Gospels, you find this, we are taking it in uh, Mark chapter 4, 35 to 40. You find the same thing in Matthew chapter 8, verse 23 to 27, as well as in Luke chapter 8, verse 22 to 25. This incident pictures the natural reaction of people in great trouble, especially when it seems the Lord doesn't care. Or when it appears God is too slow to act and to command the solution. When, in Amazon examination, when we are writing academic examination, or we are writing new examination, because examination is not something that is strange, or that is uh, uh, a once-for-all experience for students. Sometimes, when writing exams, problems surface, challenges arise, and that we need urgent solution so that we'll be able to make it and then go forward. Fresh conflicts might arise to so severe that uh, which has been before and so that they can challenge, sometimes challenge the validity of our relationship with the Lord and stretch our faith, sometimes to limit, even tempting us to ask the Lord in desperation, careless Lord, Lord, that we perish, but Please understand. That's how examination is generally. And that is how life is generally. Storms are normal negative developments in life. And everyone we have is our own fair share. Never think that we, you are going to ever be shielded from having or experiencing the storm of life. Job had his own. David experienced his own. And even the saints of old, and people in contemporary times, they have at one time or the other gone through storm. That whatever storm is confronting you tonight, you will be sealed. And the Lord will arise to your help, and will give you the needed victory in Jesus' name. Let's see the experience of Job at his own time. Job, chapter 5. Job chapter 5, I read 36 and 7. Although affliction cometh not from, not forth of the dust, neither does trouble spring out of the ground, yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. That's it. It's not something strange. It's a common experience of all men, students and staff, academic or non-academic uh, staff. Everybody faces storms in life in Psalm 107. Psalm 107. I read from verse, five, from verse 1 to 5. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endure forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who may have redeemed from the hand of the enemy? Of course, that is from there. And gathered them out of the land, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness, in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hurry, hungry, and thirsty. They are so fainted in. Death. That's the expression of storm from which God delivered the children of Israel. He will deliver you, no doubt, in Jesus' name. The Savior is, has never promised us a candy life. While on this earth, no man can enjoy insulation against difficulties, against problems, and negative challenges. It doesn't matter who you are. Sinners cry. Saints to sigh. God's word doesn't guarantee anyone the immunity to pain and grief. God has fixed it that nature should have both smooth sail and rough times, and that all men should experience both. 
You find that in Genesis chapter 8, reading in verse 22. Genesis chapter 8, reading in verse 22. Why they ask me, Nenet, seed time and affairs, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night, shall not cease. Time of challenges, time of victory, time of success, definitely will come. And God will see you through in Jesus' name. The comfort of the scripture is that the Savior will not abandon his own people who are going through any kind of storm, any kind of challenges. And we have the promises of God that in this forthcoming exam, you are going to do valiantly. You are going to experience success. And the Lord is going to fulfill your desires in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter, 50, uh, chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. I read from verse 1. Isaiah 43. From verse 1. But now, thus fear the law that created thee, O Jacob. Now, where you find Jacob, just put your name there. And where you find Israel, put your son's name there. Because the Bible is not a literary book. It's not a mystery book. It's a living book written by the living God for living people. And if you are one of those people living a life in Christ, living for God's glory, for God's purpose, then this is for you tonight. Put your name there. Where you find Jacob, put your personal name. Where you find Jesus, put your son's name. But now thus fear the law that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by, my, by thy name. Thou art mine. I say you are God. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Is that how, how, how much you can shout? Amen. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame can do upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. This exam is a work over for you in Jesus' name. That is the promise of God. And heaven and earth can pass away, no just or his issue of his promises shall pass away. Because his promises in Christ Jesus, they are yea and amen. Even your life tonight, his promises will be yea and amen in Jesus' name. God will arise to your call for hell. He will steal the wings and create a safe passage for you. You are going to the other side. Say amen again. Even sinners in the grip of affliction can be delivered tonight and will be delivered tonight if they will repent and call upon God. See what the Bible says in Psalm 107. Psalm 107. I read now from verse 10 to 14. Psalm 107, from verse 10 to 14. Such are seed in darkness, and in the shadow of death, being bound in hapleta and iron, because they rebel against the word of God, and contemn the counsel of the Most High. Therefore, they brought down their heart with labor, they fell down, and there was none to hear. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and break their bounds in thunder. Sinner, the Lord will break your bounds of sin. He will deliver you from the yoke of iniquity. He will set you free. He will save you, and you shall be eased in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need not despair, though the sun can rise in our way and our road thereof. If the Savior is on board with us, we can rely on His power. We can call upon His name. 
and decree a calm. And it shall be so, according to your decree, whatsoever you decree, here or not tonight, it shall be established on your behalf in heaven, in Jesus' name. Three points in the message. Number one. Catalog of exam forms. Number two. Causes of exam storms. And number three, conquering exam storms. You will conquer them. Point number, can you remind point number one? Yes, catalog of exam storms. Job chapter five. Let me read from verses six and seven. Job chapter five. I read that he sees and serving. Or do affliction come not forth of the doors? Neither do trouble spring out of the ground. Yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. When a son comes, a son brings with it his own challenges, his own troubles, his own storms. Of course, you cannot sit in a peace in Zion and expect success. You've got to burn the midnight oil. You've got to toil and labor. And apart from toiling and reading and, uh, you know, researching and preparing uh, for academic excellence and success, sometimes there are other storms that come along, you know, with exam time. And uh, I'm going to see some of them tonight. Uh, I like it. And by the power of God, you will be subdued under your feet. Job chapter 14. I read in verse 1. Man. And when he says man, he uses that word in a generic sense. Woman inclusive. Boys and girls inclusive. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. But the Lord will deliver you. First Peter chapter four. First Peter chapter four. I read there in verse twelve. First Peter chapter four. Reading verse twelve. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. As though some strange thing happen unto you. I told you it's not strange. It's a common experience of all men. Look at chapter 5. And I read the later part of verse 9. First Peter chapter 5. The later part of verse 9. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. That is to say, whether sinner, whether things. It's a common experience of all men. Storm is a common experience of all men. And a calm storm is any negative happening or situation that injures students' optimum performance. Anything or any situation or any circumstance that hinders your optimum performance in exam, that is what we call exam storm. Or for those of us who are writing an exam of life, we are non students, then you can call it life storm. Any negative happening or situation or circumstance that hinders progress in your desired area of life and disturbs your overall total well being, that is a storm. Storm threatens to abort a mission. It threatens to annul a purpose, a threaten to make the future look bleak. Look in the scripture. This definition feeds the recorded experience of certain things. Backsliders and sinners. Life storms include the following. Number one, family of evils. You know, it's at such a time of exam like this, uh, Text messages may be coming from home. Her phone call may be coming from home. Mother is sick. She's now admitted in the hospital. You love your mother. Everybody should love his mother. Her mother. 
And that will stop your mind. You are not able to fully concentrate and give your best to that exam. That's a song. Let it have a calm. Number two, generalize calamity. Generalize calamity. Okay, for the first one that we talk about, let us read Second Samuel chapter 13. Second Samuel chapter 13. I read there, verses 1 and 2. Second Samuel chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass after this. That Absalom, the son of David, now uh, here you can see, in the case of David, it was the two children that manifested incest. And that brought trouble. Amnon committed incest with Tamar, and Absalom is the uh, uh, brother of uh, Tamar, and we want to take revenge. In fact, it was, uh, you know, calamity of his thoughts in that family. It can come in different ways. And passions and pride. Now, number two, I said, generalize problems. We have read in Job chapter 1, verses 14 to 16. Let's read it again. Job chapter 1. Reading there, verses 14 through 16. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them. And the servants fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped. Alone, tell thee. Generalize calamities. And we need to pray against that. You know, in time past, it was an exam period going on. Maybe sudden mechanical, you know, breakdown on the campus. No water, no electricity. Students enjoy two, three days. The next day, all we are seeing. Then they say, okay, pack your load, go. That will not happen again. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Number three, famine and poverty. You need money in terms of exam for your brain to function effectively. You need good food. But, oh, you don't need that. Ah, uh-uh. ah. Praise the Lord. You need good food. Balance diet, not junk. And when there's no money coming from home and uh, you are cash starved. Just manage me. Take Gary in the morning. Fufu at night. Get to the exam and you are dosing. Because all the blood that you start the brain while writing for optimum, you know, performance, those bloods they come down and they are attacking the, you know, the, the fufu in the stomach. Tell me. How will that student be best in that exam? It's a storm and the count. Number, what next now? Number four, persecution and oppression. Well, for that one you can read later. Genesis chapter 12, that's for famine and poverty. Genesis chapter 12, verse 10. Second Kings chapter 3, verse 25 to 30. Now, number five, famine and oppression. Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1. I read there. In verse 13 and 14. And the Egyptian made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar, and in breeze, and in all manner of service in the field. And their service, we, we are made, they made them serve was with rigor. Sometimes, after writing an exam, or even done an exam, persecution can write up. As there are godly lecturers, we have some godly lecturers as well. 
We have seen cases of ungodly lecturers that will be demanding, you know, to mess up a lady before that lady can pass in the exam. That's his son. The lecturer says his eye on you. Or maybe, maybe not his lady now, is he a boy? And the lecturer just says his face on you. For no just cause, he just hates you, you know, uh, he doesn't want to see your face. And he's saying, you, for this, for this paper, forget about it, you cannot pass. That is strong. But there is a God in heaven that specializes in calming storms. He will defend you. Yeah. Not only that number, number what next? Number five now. Sudden or prolonged sickness. How can you be your best? When you are afraid with sudden sickness. Asthma. Malaria, uh, ulcer, or all what not, taking your body, turning exam. You know, that's why some people say, Academ uh, examination is not the best way of testing students' ability. Um, people who believe in that, uh, who hold to that uh, school of thought, they are thinking of serious circumstances under which people write exams. And they feel that a uh, these two people of the same ability and uh, intelligence, if they are subjected to different circumstances, the performance may vary. But then, they are quick to also ask, there is no other or better way of testing students' ability. So, sudden sickness, or maybe prolonged sickness, so the sickness has been there, the managing it. Just trying to go and trying to go. You know, some people, it is done in some time, the sickness will come. They won't foresee during the semester. But let the exam time come, then the sickness will come off. Sometimes, some of those sicknesses are not just ordinary. They were sicknesses that were caused by demons who were sent on errand by wicked men. Maybe from who? From people. And it's at such time just to weaken you and make you uh, not to be able to get, you know, your desire. Then, the thing will come at that time. And then the oppressing and the tormenting. Not only that, number six, we are talking about sudden of, okay, for the case of sudden or prolonged sickness, let's see the case of Job. Job chapter 2. I read in verses 7 and 8. Job chapter 2. Reading verses 7 and 8. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, that is by the Lord's permission, and smote Job with four boys from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a portion to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Satan is the cause of sicknesses and diseases, many sicknesses and diseases that will face the life of men. Apart from that, there could be social problems. Social problems. That you have this social problem that you are managing. During the exam, can you imagine an undergraduate? Bedwetting. That's not ordinary. And uh, during exam time, you go to the hotel. You don't want to sleep in the hotel because, you know, the problem is there. You don't want people to see it. But then you need enough and adequate rest. And then, eventually, uh, I'm running from one hotel to another. You scott here and run to this other place. When you discover that uh, this problem is here, you know, in that, uh, you know, room, then you run to another place, you know, and all that. And that, during the exam, how can you make the best? Or be the best in that exam? At other times, it is blocked advancement. That you want to make progress, but something is limiting you. You want to read, something is hindering you. You want to, you know, do group discussion, work past questions, question papers, but you just cannot concentrate. 
Look at it. First Timothy, First Thessalonians chapter two. First Thessalonians chapter two. I read there in verse eighteen. We are called. We will have come unto you, even I Paul, once and again. But Satan hindered us. He will not hinder you. He will be restricted, limited, banished. He will not be able to hinder you in Jesus' name. And these are many reasons why people, why students fail, or why students just end up in average performance, mediocre grade, poor uh, finishing. At other times, it is unsolved family issues. Unsolved family issues. During exam time, then daddy calls you from home, uh, dear daughter or dear son, will you believe me? I just received my track letter. Now, if that should happen, how are you going to be your best in the exam? These are storms confronting uh, students' optimum performance in examination. Let God be quieting all of them on your behalf in Jesus' name. You will have a smooth soul. That takes me to the second point causes of exam storms. Proverbs chapter 26. I read in verse 2. Proverbs chapter 26. Reading there in verse 2, as a bird by wandering, and as a swallow by flying, so the case, causeless shall not come. And this fact is just simply telling us that storms don't just come. They don't just come. Most storms are not nature's creation. They have a cause. In Psalm 119, I read in verse 67. Psalm 119, reading verse 67. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now, have I cared thy word. Uh, David was saying, I'm the cause. I'm responsible for the storm that blew against my life. I was responsible before I was afflicted. I went astray. Maybe you have gone astray. Maybe you have gone into sin. Maybe you have no Christ in your life. Maybe you are not born again. Maybe you have gone your own way. Like a sheep gone astray. But tonight, the Lord is calling you back to the Lord and Savior of your soul. Joshua, chapter 24. Joshua, Chapter 24. I read here in verse 20. Joshua 24. Verse 20. If ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he has done you good. That's like that. If you backslide, then you expose yourself to the storms masterminded by the devil. But the solution to is return unto the Savior of your soul. The causes of storm include the following. Well, let me just uh, state them and then I will elucidate on them. Number one, the diffidence of sin. Number two, the deeds of sinners. Number three, the directives from the Savior. Number four, the decisions of Satan. And these are the four major causes of storms and troubles and challenges that confront us in life. Number one, the dividends of sin. A storm may be a wage of sin or a retribution for misdeed. Unrepentant, habitual sinners. We have it all off in life, one way or the other. It's a natural consequence of sin. Troubles, problems are natural 
consequences of sin. The sinner will succumb to life's storms unless they repent and seek deliverance from the Lord. Look at Isaiah chapter 48. I read in verse 22. Isaiah chapter 48. Reading there in verse 22. There is no peace. Fear the Lord unto the wicked. Can you see that? No peace. Fear the Lord, not fear the preacher. Fear the Lord to the wicked. I told you, a life without Christ is a crisis full life. Look at Isaiah chapter 57. I read in verse 20 and also verse 21. But the wicked, anytime you see the word wicked, that is the Bible language for sinner. Let the wicked for say his way. He's talking to sinners. The wicked are like a troubled sea. He's talking about sinners. But the wicked are like a troubled sea when it cannot rest. Whose waters cast up my and dark. There is no peace. Fear my God to the wicked. If a sinner here tonight, I invite you to the Savior. I invite you to Jesus. I invite you to the Redeemer. He came to set you free from the captivity of sin. He came so that you might be redeemed. Why will you perish, O house of Israel? Come unto the Savior tonight, so we have mercy upon you in Jesus' name. So, in uh, Isaiah chapter 59, I read verses 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shutting, I cannot save. Neither is it here heavy, I cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Sinner friend, your prayer will be but in vain if you relish in sin, if you continue in iniquity. That's a question in the Bible. Maybe we can, maybe we read it together. This is a good digression. That's a necessary digression. Romans chapter 6. And it's in verse 1. Romans chapter 6. Read in verse 1. What shall we say then? Sinner friend, what shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Answer me. The answer is in verse 2. God forbid. You can't continue in sin so you can pass your exam. You can't continue in sin. So God can talk, can, you know, can silence your tongue. So God can heal you, you know, in sin and continue in sin. So you continue to heal insults upon your maker. In Psalm 119, I read verse 67. Psalm 119, reading verse 67. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. In fact, sin is the precursor of all evils that plague the life of men. Sin acts like a fertilizer for Satan to afflict, to torment, and to work all forms of evil in the life of men. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now, if I care thy word, I pray you will keep the word of God. The word of God that beats you repentance from sin. That beats you uh, a, a, having a contrite heart and repenting and turning away from all known sin. I pray you will hear that word tonight, this command tonight, in Jesus' name. Psalm 107, I read verses 10 through 12. Psalm 107, from verse 10 through 12. Thought as sit in darkness. And in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebel against the words of God and contain, and contain the counsel of the Most High. Therefore, they brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Maybe you are there, you are saying, Well, uh, preacher, just pray. I'm here to receive miracles, you know, and go on. All this preaching is too much, and all that. If you close your ears, appearing the law, the Bible says, even your prayer will be an abomination. 
And so then, the two go together. The word of God, prayer. You see, that's what we did in starting this message. I open the word of God to you where you find uh, a galaxy. And that you have to delight yourself in the Lord before he then grant you the desires of your heart. And as you repent, and you come to him, and then show your delight in the Lord. Definitely. God cannot lie. His promises are here and amen. He will fulfill your heart's desire. He will grant your delight in Jesus' name. So, when there is sin, sin opens the door to failure, to calamity, to catastrophe. Number two, the deeds of sinners. This is talking about other sinners now. Aside yourself, human wickedness makes life poor. That people have sold themselves as agents of Satan. They run messengeric assignments for the devil. And they are there in your cell. You live together. You don't know them. They are witches. They are wizards. They are familiar spirits. They belong to God. And yet, you don't know. You sleep together. You eat together. Wine together. And all that. And they have a subtle way of launching attack against your life purpose. And if you don't have the protection of God around you, if you don't have the shield of faith, if you have, don't have, you know, uh, uh, your guardian angel, how are you going to, how are you going to escape? How are you going to escape? I remember a particular testimony of, uh, you know, one of our brothers in our church in Lagos. A brother now, at that time, an agent of Satan. Uh, one of the brethren has come to preach to him, and they know that this boy, by name Sunday, was a typical agent of Satan. Then in the night, you know, he got offended at the preaching of her brother. Then in the night, he went into the court, in the, you know, in the hair. And then reported this, uh, you know, uh, our brother, you know, unto the brother that preached to him, unto them in the occultic world. And he received power, you know, to go and attack and smite this brother, you know, to death, right in the sleep. So he turned into the hair, went to the house of, uh, you know, this our brother, and then, with the power he has received from the court wall, and then recited an incantation over and over, and then raised up his arm to smite brother, uh, 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 you know, this brother, so that from sleep, he will just pass on to death. Sometimes most of the obituary posters of students, colleagues you see on the campus, it's not just ordinary. Because God has said, with long life, Will I satisfy you? So, as he raised off his hand like that, with that occultic power, to slap this brother, no smite this brother, so he will pass from sleep to death, this person smote a wall. And he said, what? Then he went back, recanted the incantation again, recited it over and over, raised off his hand, to smite again, he smote a wall. He did it the third time, smote a wall. Then eventually he returned back. He said, you know, he, he met with a strange experience. Then he gathered some uh, other powerful people, powerful occultic people, more powerful than himself, you know, to join him in the mission, on the mission. They came, and then, as they got to where this brother was sleeping, an angel of God rose up with a sword drawn and cut off their wings. They went back home totally, you know, injured, almost like a wretch. Eventually, he went back to the occult and said, look, uh, this thing will not work and all that. Then he said, look, we have warned you. Don't go to those chronic issues. Then the man said, what do you mean by chronic issues? Then he said, okay, if your power is stronger than your own, then take all your power. Then he went back to the church and then he repented, gave his life to Jesus. And he was the one sharing this testimony in one of our Thursday revival service in Lagos. So, uh, you, you expose yourself to demons, to evil spirits, to power of darkness, when you are just, you know, readily in sin. That's nothing you gain in sin. Only a sinner makes, you know, a mock of sin. You expose yourself to attack of demons. You have nothing to gain in immorality. Nothing to gain in smoking. Nothing to gain in cheating. You know, sinners. Even if they know answer to the question in exam, they will still let the be out. Because leopard cannot change his skin. Neither can they do good who are accustomed to do evil. Stop it again. 
That's why tonight I'm beckoning unto you, come unto the table. So, human wickedness, may they make life tough. Apart from that, sometimes faculty or departmental, you know, rules and uh, policies, sometimes corrupt officials, corrupt lecturers, they make life difficult and tough. I remember, you know, somebody sharing a testimony. He went for a professional exam. You know, well, not his testimony at all, just uh, giving me a report. He went for a professional exam. And so many people did well in that professional exam that they now felt that if we should, uh, you know, qualify everybody, then we have so many, uh, you know, consultants, you know, in this, uh, uh, in this profession. Therefore, from CC, uh, the past mark is now CC and above. So, if you score 59, sorry for you. You know, there are sometimes, some people do that too. Say, look, how can everybody just, you know, pass F just like this? No, it's not possible. That means the exam is so key. I remember a lecturer here, you know, on this campus sometimes. He will come to the class, you know, both of, both, you know, himself before the student and say, in this my course, so body can score an A. And in this, in this, in this course, only, only, only me, myself, can score a B. So the best of you can only score, you know, a C. Because according to him, A belongs to God. B belongs to himself. And so, good luck. Whatever you get from sea downwards. Just to prove that, look, my cause uh, is not cheap. And some people, you know, they derive joy in wickedness. God will deliver you from them in Jesus' name. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 29. I read in verse 2. Proverbs 29. Reading verse 2. When the righteous and in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear the rule, the people mourn. If you are often a cause, thought, and by a wicked man, God will deliver you in Jesus' name. Number three, the directives from the Savior. Yes, there are times when God permits some to rage against certain, you know, uh, people's lives. At such time, God, A, is either one of the following. Number one, to test or to try. As in the case of Abraham in Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 and 2, God did tempt Abraham. Actually, the real meaning of the word tempt from the Greek translation is test. So he said, don't sacrifice that to your son. Your only son. Whom thou not Sacrifice your Isaac. Thank God he passed that test. So many people today are looking for the blessings of Abraham and they are not ready to sacrifice their Isaac. I remember a particular sister here, this campus, here in our fellowship, long time ago now. That would, you know, it was it was, a, it was a stormy time throughout. Exam time. Always stormy time. It wasn't like that before. She was a, you know, local champion, you know, where she was coming from, uh, in her secondary school, coming to the camp. I think she came late. Uh, the semester was almost going midway, you know, before she was through with her admission, you know, processes. And then, back to the all that. She performed wonderfully well in uh, most of the some of the causes, but she had it wrong. She prayed and cried to God. God said, yes, I've had your prayer. I'm going to glorify you, but may not be in this exam. But thank God, after leaving the campus, thank God, this woman, an executive woman now in the secular world. So sometimes to test. Number two, to train. In Judges chapter 3, you can read verses 1 to 3. Number 3, to pain. To pain. Sometimes God pains his erring children. 
that in the case of Jonah, God sent him to Nileve, he ran to Tachi. And right there, as he ran away, minister, God prepared a way to swallow him. Until he became changed. And said, God, I surrender. Number four, to teach. Teach backsliders. Number four now, the decision of Satan. Satan is a causative force of most sons, especially those with equal destructive effects. Job's travails, persecutions of the saints, opposition of Gentiles, church conflict, and ministerial difficulties are hard and dry things of the devil. Failure in exam, poor academic performance, mediocre grades, average performance are all handwriting of the devil. The devil may cast him on occasional disorder in order to hinder, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. If a saint who hasn't done anything to warrant any divine punishment faces a great destructive storm of life, then Satan is at work. But tonight, through your prayer, you shall be delivered. That leads me to the last point conquering life's storm. Matthew chapter 8, I read in verse 25. Matthew 8, 25. And his disciples came to him, and I woke him, saying, Lord, so forth. We perish. The Lord will save you. You will not perish. First Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. First Peter chapter 5. Verses 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant. Because you are passed with the devil as a roaring lion. Go get about seeking whom may give, whom may may give all. Whom receive, step back in the face. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You will receive Satan to marry. Satan will be paralyzed in your life. So, it is certain that life storms will arise, but we can conquer the storms and go on fulfilling the will of God and God's purpose for our lives. Our victory over storms of life, however, comes in a process. You need just five things. Number one, conduct a search. Number two, cry to the Savior. Number three, confess against Satan. Number four, confess your success. Number five, continue in service. Let's look at them in some. Number one, I said, conduct a search. First, you should ascertain that the stones aren't products of your own sin. Or the divine punishment for acts of rebellion, if they are, then hold up, confess, repent, and pray for pardon in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter five, chapter thirteen, verse five. The Bible says, "Examine yourself. Find out this trouble confronting me, this affliction, this calamity, this distress, this failure, this opposition." To my progress. What's the cause of it? Is it because I'm living in sin? Is it because of my disobedience or rebellion to God? Then, if the answer is yes, repent. God is a merciful God. He still saves. He still forgives. He still restores even backsliders to himself. Then, after you have done that, number two, cry to the Savior. We should pray and pray in faith. Pray sincerely, pray fervently, and pray persistently unto the Lord until He arises and He calms your storm. I told you of a lecturer that uh, used to say, maybe I don't think the lecturer has retired now. He used to say, In this my cause, A belongs to God, B belongs to me. And the best of you can 
God see and the rest, whatever you can take. And there's a particular brother in this fellowship then, he went to that prayer room, that same prayer room there, and knelt down. Opening that door, he knelt down and said, God, I'm your child. This man said, it belongs to you. Whatever belongs to my father also belongs to me. Oh God, I claim this A in the name of Jesus. And he prayed fervently in faith. And eventually, the time of the exam, you know, came, wrote the exam, and then uh, left everything in the hand of God. Normally, what the lecturer would do was that if you score above, uh, above, uh, what was C now? 60 AB. <laughs> 50, if you score above 59, it will cut it down. And uh, if the best student scored, let's say, 80. Now, to bring it to 59, what do you do from 80? Eh? 21. It then removes 21 from everybody down, down the line. So, this God that prays, fastly. And he left everything in the hand of God. Now, he would normally do, you know what, the normal thing he, he used to do. And then, wrote the exam, did everything. When uh, the result, that was actually an Amazon exam. Amazon exam. Now, in the race semester, when people came from holiday, the short holiday, uh, they came checking the results and all that. They came to this brother, uh, bro, have you gone to check your results uh, in this, uh, you know, course? They mentioned the code and all that. Uh, I said, oh, the brother was one of the executives. He was so busy with fellowship activities that he didn't have time to go when everybody was going to check the results. Until everything has been recorded, the thing has been uh, sent to the faculty, and the results have been, you know, computed, you know, uh, perfect, everything perfected. Eventually, uh, this brother now took time, then he went to the lecturer. Immediately he saw the, you know, the, the lecturer saw the boy. You know, he had one funny way of making death of, uh, you know, issues, as they normally call me Christian. So immediately he saw him, he said, Pastor. In a sarcastic way, just to ridicule him, to say that, uh, now, we see, Pastor. Then, uh, what's your name? Pastor. Pastor mentioned his name. Then he looked down the, you know, the script, the exam uh, script, the result. Lo and behold, our brother scored 71%. But he forgot to do the normal thing he used to do to our brother. When he saw the thing, he couldn't believe his eyes. Say what? What do you say is your name again, Pastor? <laughs> Pastor mentioned his name. Look at the thing, 71. Had it been that the brother went at the normal time, he could have just said, come back. And use that opportunity to, you know, do what he normally, you know, did. But the thing has been submitted to the faculty, everything has been computed and all the rest. There was nothing he could do any longer. Essentially, he turned and said, Professor. Praise the Lord. If you are a pastor here tonight, the Lord will make you a professor in Jesus' name. So there are people just look down on God's people as, uh, you know, the run of the mill set of people. They never do well, you know, kind of people, you know, and all the rest. All the other people, what they call, you know, from sea downward. For the first time, this God that broke his rule. And in your department, in your country, this exam, you are going to break the record. So tonight, we are about to pray and get ready. Whatever is your desire, it will be actualized in Jesus' name. Cry to the Savior, I say. Number one, conduct his heart. Number two, cry to the Savior. Number three, contest against Satan. If Satan is the cause of your own problem, your own storm, Sickness, disease, affliction, wounds, lack, and uh, psychosomatic troubles, and all the rest. Tonight, contest 
against Satan. We shouldn't allow Satan to roam in our lives. Whenever we see him at work, we should arise. Stop his activities. Chase and lock him out. And it will be so according to your decree in Jesus' name. James chapter 4, verse 7. Resist the devil. And what will happen? He will flee away from you. Then, number four, confess your sources. Confess your sources. Don't speak negatively. After writing any exam, any paper, don't be in the habit of, ah, that paper was bad, that was, was terrible. Ah, I don't think I can pass. Ah, 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 never say that. Never say that. Children of God don't confess negatively. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe also his prophets, and God will establish the desire of your heart in Jesus' name. Finally, continue in service. Don't be in the habit of, uh, I have exam tomorrow, I can't attend Monday Bible study. Um, uh, you know, writing exam uh, next week, therefore, no more fellowship. No, continue in the service. And as you continue in the service of the Lord, it will grant the desire of your heart in Jesus' name. What else are we waiting for? I think it is time to cry unto God. Delight also yourself in the Lord. And if I grant you the desire of your heart, I don't know the kind of storm. Trust me, your sources. I don't know the circumstance. You find yourself now. I don't know the trouble plaguing you. I don't know the negative circumstance, situations that you are passing through. Tonight, you can call upon God and God will deliver you. It is time to pray. It is time to seek the face of the Lord. The Lord is on the throne. He is going to arise on your head. Like a mighty terrible one. Tonight, they will actualize your desire. Don't accommodate that thought. Give it a technical knockout. Silence it. Subdue it. Resist it. As I do unto you according to your desire. The Lord specializes in impossibility. Anything top great, top difficult. Tonight, the Lord will turn things around. Call upon him. He will answer you. He will show you great and mighty things which God knows not. He will done it for others. He will do it for you. What kind of academic storm? Staring you on the face. Threatening your progress. Standing on your way. Command peace. Decree peace. Decree peace. He is the Lord of storms and waves. All power in heaven and on earth is given unto me. Whatever you decree here on earth, you shall be established. Whatever you decree here on earth, you shall be established unto me. This exam must be a work over. It must be a work over. It must be a walk over. As it difficult for us. As it prerequisite for us. As it let it for us. You are walking over. You are walking over. You are walking over. The Lord is on the throne. The Lord is on the throne. 
no impossibility before him. He specializes on things thought impossible. To the God of storms and rain. That's weakness to the damage. That negative circumstance to the subdue. By the word of your mouth tonight, you decree your own success. The Lord will put a testimony in your little mind. Every storm arising as a result of this exam, the Lord will calm them. The Lord will come there. Oh yes, exam time. They come along with their own terms. But the Lord will come there. The Lord will come there. Please be seen. And you are passing over. You are passing over. I say you are passing over. In Jesus' name we pray. Mark today in your life. It shall be the beginning of days. The beginning of miracles. The beginning of spectacular. God is going to mark you for success. For exploit. For extraordinary performance. For breakthroughs in major and minor courses, you are passing over. You are crossing over. You are crossing over to the other side of success. The other side of progress. You are crossing over. In Jesus' name. Now, before I begin to decree, because I'm going to decree against everything that drops your soul. Anything that is willing your success. I'm going to decree against them, you are going to give way. And you cross over. Let's, let's start at the right point. Listen. A sinner is the enemy of his own soul. Why God is interested in your success and progress? Why God wants to fight your battle for you? There's only one thing that is hindering God. There's only one thing that can hinder God, and that is your sin. Because, can we continue in sin that grace will abound? God forbid. A sinner is the enemy of his own soul. But tonight, stop being an enemy of your own soul. Come out of your sin. Agree with the Savior. Come on board. Come on board. On the sheep where Christ is rising. If you are there, you want to repent of your sin. You want to surrender your life to Jesus. You want God to have free access into your life. Tonight you can raise up your hand and pray for you. It's a merciful God. He pardons iniquity. He forgives sins. And He delivers from yours. Can I see your hand up? You are taking that right decision tonight. You are giving your life to Jesus. Raise it up properly. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. Raise it up properly. If the Lord is calling you, He wants to do you good tonight. As you turn and say, you turn a new leaf, 
to surrender your life unto Him. If you mean business, can you just come forward here? As you are lifting up your hand, please just open your eyes and walk forward here. Excuse that people excuse you so you can pass, you know, uh, come forward now, come here. I'm waiting for you. So the liberal decision you have to take between you and God, come forward, I'm waiting for you here. Come forward, come forward, come forward. This way, in the uh, choir stand here. Come forward here, to the choir stand. I'm waiting for the rest of you. This will be your last chance. Tomorrow will be too late. Don't waste the opportunity of your time. If the Lord is calling you tonight, if you are coming forward, I want you to bow down your head. You are in the presence of the Lord. You are repenting and you are saying sorry for all your sins. Tell Him to forgive you. Tell Him to forgive you. It's a lifetime opportunity. Do not come your way another time. But as you are here tonight, seize this opportunity. I'm still waiting for you. If you are there, come and repent and give your life to the Savior. If the Lord is calling you, He says, if you are ashamed of me in this wicked world, I also will be ashamed of you in the kingdom of my Father. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. Come forward, come forward, come forward. Don't let the God's opportunity close on you. Those of you in the front, please give way for others to come in. Give way for others. Come over here. Come over here. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Don't waste time. Don't waste time. Now for those of you in front, I want you to repent of your sin. Tell him to forgive you. The merciful girls. Is willing to save. Willing to forgive. So you are willing to repent. As you repent of your sin, so we forgive you. In Jesus' name we pray. Now those of you in front, please you say after me as I lead you in confessional prayer. Almighty God, say it out loud, Almighty God, I come to you today acknowledging my sins, repenting of them. Surrendering my life to you. I'm asking for mercy. And pardon. And forgiveness. Lord Jesus. The Savior of my soul. Save me now. From all my sins. Blot out my transgressions. And pardon all my iniquities. Write my name in the book of life. And make me one of your children. Thank you for hearing my prayer. I resolve to renounce my sins. Never more to go back to them. I will live in righteousness and in obedience unto you for the rest of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. For I pray, believe you in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, I present all these children before you that have heard your word and they are repenting in dust and ashes. Willingly of their own volition, they are coming unto you, surrendering their lives unto you tonight. Dear Lord, you said who step up, come unto you. You will know why cast out. Dear Lord, according to your word, receive this one gracious grace of your kingdom, forgive them of their sins, blot out their transgressions, pardon their iniquities, make new creatures out of them now, in Jesus' name. All their sins which are many. I pray you will blot out of their lives, you will remember them, they will remember them no more in Jesus' name. The power to go and sin no more, bestow upon them now in Jesus' name. Let the Holy Spirit bear witness with their spirit now of their sins forgiven and of their souls saved in Jesus' name. Count them among the righteous, enlist them in your army, make them one of your true children. Thank you for the answer. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The officers have prepared a place for you. We'll put you there now where we are going to continue in our prayer. The place, let's move this way. Move in this direction. For the rest of us, one thing is starting tonight. You are going to receive 
the touch of the Lord. I say one thing is starting tonight. You are going to receive the desire of your heart. One thing is starting tonight. The Lord is going to intervene in your tears. And He will turn your life around. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the last time, I want you to open up your mouth to God and tell Him your desire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm starting with cases of sickness. There's any sickness in your body, any infirmity, anything troubling you, anything that you know is, uh, we will not make this exam to be, you know, conducive for you. We will not make it to be in your bed in this exam in the form of sickness, affliction, torment. Can you raise up your own eyes closed or let's bow here before God? Can you raise up your hand for prayer? And as I pray for you, Mark is, the Lord is talking to you right now. Heavenly Father, I bring all this one before you. As many as are pain, as many as ache, as many as are diseased, as many as are tormented, as many as are sick. Oh Lord, I pray, let the supernatural hand of God touch them and take away their sicknesses in Jesus' name. Every form of my gain, every poor day, I command you right now, come out in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh Lord, for cases of asthma here, Lord, by the supernatural hand of God from above, let that asthma be yanked out of their life in Jesus' name. Every spirit of pneumonia, the Lord will do to you, come out in Jesus' name. Every affliction in the eye, and the eye is you know, issuing out blood, issuing out water. Lord, I command right now, every issue of, uh, on ceasing issue of water, or even on ceasing flow of water, out of the earth, I command you right now, cease in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, every form of swelling in the body that is causing terrible pain, terrible hurt, I command you swelling, come out in Jesus' name. Any form of disease, Afflicting and tormenting. You disease, whatever be your name, the Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every name must bow. Of things in heaven, of things on heart, and of things underneath the heart, to the glory of God the Father. I command you right now, whatever be your name, come out in Jesus' name. The Bible says, I will decree a thing. And it shall be established in heaven. And the light I shine upon my path, now on behalf of all these your children, that have one disease or the other, one sickness or the other, one trouble or the other, I decree right now, you sickness, you disease, pack your load. Pack your load. Come out in Jesus' name. As you are going now, you will never return to your bodies again for life and for eternity. In Jesus' name. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus upon your body. From the crown of your head to the tip of your toe. And I command you sickness, I command you disease, I, com I command you afflictions, behold the blood right now. And the Bible says, when I see the blood, I will pass over. I command you pass over them. Depart from them. Come out of them. To that individual that is putting your hand in your stomach, almost bending down and crying now, you know, Seven tears, I command that stomach pain right now. Come out in Jesus' name. I pray the power that raised up Jesus from the grave will quicken your stomach now and give you peace. That power that raised Jesus Christ from the grave will quicken your mortal body and neutralize every form of sickness, every form of disease in Jesus' name. Lord, every kind of terminal sickness, incurable disease, in the body of your people, the Bible says, by three immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. Dear Lord, you said, as you go, preach the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead, 
Truly I see, truly I did. Not by the authority and the command of Christ, I command every sickness, every disease, every terminal sickness, right now, come out in Jesus' name! Every long-standing problem, perennial problem, problems that come and go, sister problems, I command you right now, you have stayed long enough. From tonight, pack your nose, they pass from their body, leave them alone in Jesus' name! The Bible says, if the souls I set you free, you shall be free indeed. From every sickness, from every disease, from every affliction, from every pain, from every trauma, from every age, I command you, be free and free indeed, in Jesus' name! Thank you, Lord, for the answer prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Every psychosomatic problem, that is, problem of the mind, confusion, troubles, calamities, disturbances, that you are not able to organize or coordinate yourself. Tonight, I say peace be still. If you have that problem, raise up your hand and pray for you now. The God of ocean and seas, the God of storm and wind, is here tonight. And at the beginning of Christ, I command every storm, every raging storm, Every howling sea, every raging storm, I command you right now to move and disappear in Jesus' name. Every weight in the mind that weighs them down, that the, the, the thought brings depression, depressive thoughts, I command you right now to be filled in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray. That every form of confusion, crisis, and that individual that is hearing voice, and that voice is sent to the voice of God, and it brings you confusion in your pain. People threaten you to forget everything, and run, and leave, leave the temple. You that storm, you that voice, satanic voice, I command you, shut up for life and for eternity, in Jesus' name! The Lord set you free. The Lord deliver you. The Lord heal you. Heal you in your mind. Heal you in your soul. Heal you in your internet. Heal you in your conscious. Heal you in your subconscious. Heal you in your body. Heal you in your nerve. Heal you in your blood system. Heal you in your water system. Heal you in the top system. I shall be healed and delivered in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. That's the information you have received, and that information has thrown you out of order. Troubled you. Problem from a lot wrong relation anywhere. Tonight you can receive a miracle for them. There is no distance barrier in the realm of the spirit. We pray here, God will touch them over there. You can raise up your hand for people that you have concern for. Almighty God. Whatever touches the, the loved ones, the base hands represent, also touches them. Because lives are connected together. Dear Lord, I ask and pray on behalf of their beloved ones, relations, people connected to them one way or the other. Lord, I ask, Lord, whatever trouble, whatever calamity, whatever negative news, Whatever information they have had, whatever palaver, whatever trouble, oh Lord, tonight, on behalf of those ones, distance away, I command, please receive in Jesus' name. Instead of bad news, I command and decree, you will hear a good news in Jesus' name. Every trouble, every sickness, every disease, every oppression, I command, 
peace be still on behalf of those who are they may be in Jesus' name. Bible says he sent his word and his word healed them and he delivered them from the oppression anywhere they may be, no matter how distant away they may be. I send the word of deliverance, the word of dominion, the word of liberty, the word of liberation, the word of emancipation. I command emancipation upon you from all your trouble, chaos, calamity, suffering. Peace is in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. From those ones, you will hear an answer of peace. If you are there, the only torment. Torment. Of all shapes and sizes. Oppression. Demonic attack. Oppression of the wicked in your life. Nightmare, calamities, unfortunate experiences. Tonight is your night of breakthrough. Yeah. You are breaking through. Yeah. Lift up your hand. Let's pray together. Father, I come against the personalities in the evil realm that come to plague the life of these ones. Whatever the spiritual connection between them. I lay my hand on the sword of the Spirit. I cut asunder that channel in Jesus' name. All you tormentors, you afflictors, wherever you are operating from, from the second heaven, from the first heaven, in the galaxies, here on the ground, in the water, in any medium, tonight I suffer you. I separate you. I, every connection, every relationship, I command you, be cut now in Jesus' name. You that individual, that uh, in the you know, people, stranger personalities will come as a lady and be messing you up. And after they mess you up, then you begin to experience serious pain in your menstrual cycle. Tonight, I put an end to that oppression in your life. Be delivered in Jesus' name. Every form of nightmare, every form of affliction of the demon, of evil spirit, of powers of darkness, tonight I banish them from your life. Come out in Jesus' name! For if the son I set you free, tonight you must be free in Jesus. You are free. You are free. I say you are free. You are free indeed in Jesus' name! Thank you, Lord, for the answer prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. For any exam you have written that appears no hope, tonight there is hope. I said there is hope. Let up your hand for any paper you have written that appears tough, hopeless, and all the rest. God specializes in turning situations around. Father, in the name of Jesus. Behold all these your children. Behold these hands that are raised up. Not to me, to you, O oh God. Whatever paper that I've been written, dear Lord, we bring those papers before you now. Every mistake on those papers, on those trees, by the everlasting blood of Jesus, we brought them out in Jesus' name. When the examiner begins to mark those papers, they see everything correct. They see nothing to mark wrong. They see an unbeatable performance. They see an academically talented paper. They see an excellent performance in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, I know it is answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. For the papers here to be written, raise up your hand. Heavenly Father. We are your people. We are your children. Holy Father. You are the God that supervises and controls in your de the general administration of the entire universe. Dear Lord, I commit all the papers this one will write unto you. Oh Lord, with their hands. As they hold those, pa those pens and the paper. Lord, I pray you will give them 
the pen of a ready writer in Jesus' name. Touch their brains. Touch their internet. Touch their mind. Touch their understanding. All they have taught to them. All they have read. All they have researched. All they have discussed. In good discussion. In the working of past question papers. Dear Lord. When they come into exam hall, bring everything to their remembrance in Jesus' name. On your behalf, I cancel memory failure. On your behalf, I cancel loss of point. On your behalf, I decree success. I decree good performance. Excellent performance. I decree divine intervention. The very presence of God will go with you to examine us. The hand of God will guide you. The Spirit of God will direct you. We see you through. Every paper will be a real paper. You will testify to the goodness of God. You will testify to the goodness of God. He will testify to the goodness of God. We are those are crying difficult thoughts. You will be rejoicing if you are successful in Jesus' name. Dear Lord, mark this as successful. Mark this as for excellence. God, I pray every paper this as right is marked for success. I pray, O oh Lord, any untoward experience, negative experience, after writing a exam, missing clues, downgrading in Matthew, O oh Lord, I pray, all these negative ordinances that are contrary, I blow them out by the blood of Christ in Jesus' name. Succeeding, you can succeed. Passing, you will pass. Break you, you will experience. You will rejoice in the salvation of the Lord. Testimony will never leave your loop. You yourself will become a testimony in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer of prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. I am successful. Yes, I am successful. Glory be to God who made me a real success. A real success. I am successful. Yes, I am successful. Glory be to God who made me a real success. A real success. I am successful. Yes, I am successful. Glory be to God, who made me a real success, a real success.